Are people too sensitive these days? Like, that almost isn't a question because the answer is so obvious. Like, everybody is, you know, you're not allowed to offend me. Whereas for centuries, offending somebody was like the name of the game because the other person came back to you. You're talking about offence. So as a comedian, I run the, the, that gauntlet all the time. I run the... Comedy is based on offending people. It, it is oh, well, within a certain... Like, you can, there's certain jokes you can't do. You can't do racist jokes, for example. Well, where's, the, where's the fun in doing the racist joke? With offence, this is the line I love, George. You chose to be offended. No. That's like saying, I'm going to throw a punch at you. You're going to choose whether or not it hurts you. It doesn't work like that. You raise the racism thing, but that's what everybody An does. example. No, no, that's what everybody In Ireland, does. in Ireland, it tends to be yeah, that. Like, like, there's two great words that immediately shut down all discussion. One word starts with or, so they say, that's racist. So now you've no comeback. And the second one, employed brilliantly by Fianna Fáil politicians, I find, uh, is that's Trumpism. If you're accused of Trumpism, there's no way back. You're entitled to say what you want. You're not entitled to escape the repercussions right. of how people react. Okay. Like, the Irish Times famously compared me to Harvey Weinstein. Why? Well, I had, and it cost me my job, certain views that when we send our girls out, we have a responsibility to tell them that if they have 10 vodkas, <laughs> they're, they're not in a good position to defend themselves against predatory males. And I was viewed as I was sort of supporting the rape culture, right? But why is, is the responsibility put on the girl? The point I'm trying to make is, was I offended? Of course I was offended. Did I do anything about it, which I probably could have done? Uh, no. I'm taken out by my wife and my two daughters, and they say, Pop, if you think for one minute you're dragging the entire family through all this horse manure again just for you to kind of get some kind of release, it's not going to happen. Pop. Did you learn anything from the experience of that, or did you recant anything that you said? Or no, I didn't do anything. Well, you just so you still have the same. I just became a retired broadcaster. Well, that's sad, actually. This isn't about George Hook. This is about George Hook, Joe Bradley, Kevin Myers. You well, it's George Hook that's having on. a meal with me today. Yes, so, that's true. So let's talk about George Hook. Yeah. How did you feel when people wrote stuff about you that you found unfounded? But I was angry as hell. Of course you did. But the thing is, I think there is a place for George Hook. There's a place for Kevin Myers. There's a place for you. But there has to be some regulation of the things that you get allowed to print, to allowed to be digested there is. publicly. There is. But there wasn't. No, there, no, <laughs> wrong. There is. It's called the law of libel. So <sighs> when the Irish Times compared me to Harvey Weinstein, I had the right to take an action. But you can't just have one person in power saying all these things, but not giving the right of response. It is now incumbent on the newspaper, the radio, or the television to give the alternative view. No, that's well, not true. I know. Well, that's not true, is. George. Come on. Can I ask you a question? What? And smile at me when I ask you. Are you a feminist? Well, all the women in my life, family, dating, marriage have all been incredibly strong women. So I'm a huge fan of women. And I had this aff aff affliction when I was a child of wearing women's underwear. Uh, I may be a feminist. I think the interesting thing about that in today's world, if they had discovered that seven-year-old George was wearing women's knickers, I would then get injected with some sort of stuff uh, to help me to transition to transgender. Oh, come on. It is true. You're, it is. Would you stop? Do you think that's not happening? No, shut up. Look, OK. <laughs> You're conflating cross-dressing with transgenderism. They're two totally different things. They're not. 
wearing clothes and your gender that you identify with. They're two totally different things. And are you a feminist? I, uh, the, the label of feminist is not something that I've ever used on myself, but that's mainly because I'd see myself as an egalitarian. But by Christ, I believe in everything the feminists believe in. Well, where do you stand on abortion? Basically, in a position where I'm a man, that will never have to think about that. That's not our argument, George. Well, you see, it is. It's not. No, it absolutely is our argument. His fetus is our child as well as the, the woman's child. So I take it that you're against the right for women to choose? No, but I have a religious objection okay. to abortion. So therefore, in the referendum, I voted against abortion. But what I believe in absolutely equally passionately is the right of the Irish people to decide. And they have. And I'm d happy with it. When George spoke about the fact that he was a feminist and he believes in democracy, and then at the same token, he says that he's, you know, against women having the right to choose what they do with their body. I think there's a small bit of hypocrisy there. If you were a feminist, the comments you made earlier about women needing to do whatever they need to do to protect themselves, do you not think you should be fighting from their corner, as in mothers, fathers, have a chat with your sons? There have been some famous rape cases in the last number of years in which there have been girls who literally did not know, you know, where they were. Were they taken advantage of by guys? Absolutely. Should those guys have gone to jail? Absolutely. All those things are a given. But now, do you tell your daughter as she goes out, sweetheart, don't have 25 rod this. It's not a smart idea.